Hey guys and welcome. In the last couple of minutes we've just received our first look at Halo Infinite's campaign and this isn't a trailer, this is actual gameplay with someone commentating over their first four hours of playing the campaign. Really, really excited to watch this. I, oh, I'm i really excited for Halo Infinite's campaign and I cannot wait to get my hands on and play it. And this right here is just, yeah, it's getting me really excited. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. But guys, before we do get into it though, I'd love if you drop us a like on today's video again to show the hype for Halo Infinite. I'm really excited for it and I hope you guys are as well. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Loads of new videos coming with Battlefield coming out, Call of Duty and also Halo as well. We're going to do a full walkthrough of Halo. I cannot wait. Can't wait. But anyway, without further ado, guys, let's get straight into it. All the links will be in the description, by the way. The Go check out IGN. I had coming out of my few hours of playing Halo Infinite's campaign wasn't a delightful exploration Ooh. or an incredibly fun gunplay. Instead, it came down to the characters. Halo oh, Infinite what gun was that? Legendary Master Chief once again tasked with saving the universe from yet another threat. And after five major campaigns, the Chief seems tired. He's a man of few words, but his movements and responses are heavier than I've seen before. This is Chief without Cortana. His subtle yet distinct change is far from a bad thing, though. If anything, Master Chief's forlorn demeanor that he sets aside to get the job done is a great indication to me that Halo Infinite's story is intended to be a more impactful adventure. What happened? Where is Cortana? Chief Stern oh, that's where it lay leaves off. Contrasted to his new AI companion's bubbly enthusiasm and his pilot rescuer's ah, anxiety. Ah, makes and sense. Given developer 343 Industries' failure to give Locke the faintest hint of a personality or motive in Halo 5, and the game's generally lackluster story, this was a relief. No, 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 no. Not then. Not again. We need to run. I need a weapon. Weapon. This is all I've got. It's enough. Halo Infinite's contrasting characters aren't the only things to look forward to, though. Rewarding exploration infused as the boss DNA and genuinely challenging combat could be relief in today's open world game extravaganza, where many worlds are packed to the brim with chores and only a few offer meaningful adventures beyond their main path. It looks it if they massive. The way I played in my four hour hands on time, I think Halo Infinite could fall into the latter. That's not to say there aren't some essential elements of Halo Infinite. Bro, look at that room. Three four three can pull off, like Chief's storyline with Cortana. Oh damn! For now, what I played in my preview session has left me even more eager for Halo Infinite's December eighth launch. Oh, that boss looks so sick, man. Tremonious. Can you hear me? Friends and foes, both old and new. There he is, the main man. Time and time again, Master Chief has woken up to fight a new enemy. Halo Infinite largely sees that pulled back by instead focusing on Ooh. familiar fodder with the Banish from Halo Wars 2. They eagerly step up as Chief's main adversaries after handily defeating the UNSC around Zeta Halo, including Master Chief. Their goal for Zeta Halo is unknown, but if it involves a Halo ring, there's nothing good that can come of it. Is he After the UNSC's loss, Master Chief's main objective becomes spraying the captured allied forces on Zeta Halo and thwarting whatever the Banished are planning. I am Eshram, War Chief of the Banished. This is my world now. Cortana was so badass. A mystery rather than as a primary antagonist in what I played. What happened to her after Halo 5 and whether or not she's been truly destroyed is unknown. This crucial conflict seemingly takes a backseat to the larger fight with the Banished, though it is intertwined somehow. Without getting into spoilers, I will say the few moments that dug into Chief and Cortana's relationship were an emotional gut punch. Halo Infinite is looking to deliver a meaningful story for legacy Halo fans, and I really needed to fulfill that promise after Halo 5's story missteps. She's not the driver, but a way to level the playing field. What do I call her? Oh, that looks so sick. She named herself. This is so cool. Hello, Master Chief. I'm Cortana. This all being Bro, said, don't even don't even do it to me, man. Infinite is going to be a great starting point for new people to the franchise, as the best moments I saw in the first few hours rely on prior knowledge of the series. 
I don't like the idea of people being left behind, but I selfishly prefer that this game is made for returning Halo fans. I can, I can see what she means, but the story to accommodate new players. Familiar story is just that good, go. man. Halo Infinite sure is fun to play and explore. I think I'm with you. I didn't even know what a banished was an hour ago, and even I can see the odds aren't great. I mean, like there's there's something like really satisfying about wanting to know more about the lore of the game, so you can go and research it again. That this, I think this, that's the best way that they, they they can do it. There's no way you can do it without mentioning any of the previous lore. Playing Halo Infinite is a mix of familiar and new. One moment you're navigating encounters in ship corridors, then the next you're driving several marines around the open fields of mm. Zeta Halo. As three four three has clearly stated. Halo Infinite isn't quite a true open world game despite it featuring massive sandboxes. Zeta Halo is broken up into island chunks. Okay. And masses can be connected by bridges. Not a true open world game. Things like a wasp to fly around anywhere after they're unlocked. So eventually we may get to freely explore unlocked areas, but our range will be limited and more focused at first. Zeta Halo right, is okay. the UNSC camp. So eventually it'll be more open world, but at the start it'll be a sort of mission by mission. Okay. Clearing Which is fair enough. And reclaiming it replaces the banished with marines. Even better, cleared bases convert to instant fast travel So the more of the expo Valor. exploring really Sorry will not. come once you've, you've done Valor most of the campaign. Sort of currency. It's instead a point-based tracker to of a how point, much anyway. ground the UNSC has on Zeta Halo. The more Valor you have, Ooh. the better backup and gear you can call in. I like that. As far as I could tell, earning Valor and reclaiming the broken ring is entirely optional. So what else can you do when you're not hunting down the next clue to the banished plan? People don't just get to give the Master Chief a fetch quest. The only one who really gives Master Chief any sort of command is a new AI codenamed The Weapon. She's meant to destroy Cortana and is in turn supposed to be destroyed when her operation is complete. Though Cortana is seemingly gone, The Weapon remains and is happy to assist Master Chief until she reaches her eventual demise. Much like Cortana, The Weapon will call out enemy attacks, notable objectives, Vanished facilities that need destroying, and marines in need of rescuing. I was more likely to come across a random patrol of enemies than an actual objective, but I didn't feel like I had to go too far to find something fun to do. I enjoyed the quiet moments though. Following Zeta Halo's native space groundhogs or just enjoying the view was a pleasant reprieve from the action. When uh, I was yeah. ready to get back to it, you though, see the objective I markers as well. Down and eliminate special targets to collect a unique version of their signature weapon that's equivable at FOBs. And of course, there are plenty of collectibles. A new scanner tool does make them a bit easier to find, if you have an idea of where to look. The scanner's range is rather limited, though, so it's not a free pass to finding secrets. <sighs> I'd be remiss if Damn. I didn't mention the grunt and marine dialogue. They are There'd be loads of collectibles there with the big the open world, or past open world. As ever, and have a surprising number of lines. <laughs> While the marines are far more confident and excited about joining the chief in battle. Their commentary made exploring all the more enjoyable. Just in the nick of time, Chief. Tools of the trade. Show me some three, Rome. Right? Just because Zeta Halo is a larger, more open sandbox doesn't mean 343 suddenly has us doing puzzles or tasks unbecoming of a genetically augmented super soldier like Master Chief. Finding enemies and destroying their stuff is always at the center of Halo Infinite's gameplay. And whether I was taking on a roaming Those fusion banished, coils, man. or infiltrating a fortress for a story mission, the more open nature only served to give me more options for combat. Ooh, those those grunt effects. If you've had a chance to check out either of the multiplayer test flights, Halo Infinite's excellence in it's weapon cool basic right? is no surprise. Never seen that one before. The campaign introduced me to other interesting weapons Ooh. we've yet to see in multiplayer, like the Disruptor, Ooh. a small shock pistol that doesn't do too much immediate damage, but heals up pain over time. The equipment we've seen in multiplayer unsurprisingly takes on a more powerful form in the campaign. Okay. Each of the five equipment options, grapple shot, shield core, threat sensor, drop wall, and thruster, can be upgraded with a collectible called Spartan Cores. Like most of the open world elements, finding the Spartan Cores and upgrading equipment is optional. Master Chief won't start the adventure with all equipment either. You'll find new tools to play with at specific story beats. Lacking a piece of equipment doesn't necessarily mean you're blocked off from certain areas from what I saw, but getting to or taking on difficult encounters might be more manageable should you have more equipment. <laughs> I can't fucking wait for this game, bro. Oh my god. 
challenge fit for a Spartan. Most of the big story beats happen in large, foreboding structures that could be viewed as something akin to dungeons. Is this the room that classic Halo was in the trailer? Grunts, jackals, brutes, and elites Ooh, made up the Oh, this looks sick. Look at those. Phase. Look at that. Their role, weapon, and armor variety didn't feel lacking in combat. I came across one set of brutes that were so geared Oh, up this is the gameplay from the trailer. Boss fight. The hunters make a return Estrum to in the background, or is that Tartarus? Not Tartarus, what's his name? Ring, the flood was alluded to, though I never saw them. Can't remember the his name. weren't present either. 343's vision of recapturing the essence of combat evolved in Halo Infinite means there's not really room for them. And honestly, I have plenty of fun without them. I didn't see any drones either, so I'm hoping the new flying enemies equipped with hard light weapons, the skimmers, will be their replacement. The real combat stars, though, are the boss fights. The first one with go. the brute lieutenant named Tremonius absolutely kicked my ass at first on heroic difficulty. Mm -hmm. A moment without movement rewarded Tremonius as he entered the encounter guns blazing and took me out twice in a row. I had been handling heroic without any issues up until that point. So I was stunned to see how Tremonius' aggression and support... Although, that's, that's how it needs off. to be, though. It needs to be like that. If you could just take a boss out in out. like that, then it's no fun. I have thus far only explored a fraction of Halo Infinite. Though the map isn't as large as something you'd find in an Assassin's Creed. Far from it, I'd say. What it does hold seems to offer something more curated with excellent combat at its heart. The story part is what I'm most curious about now. 343 needs to stick the landing in the plot department, especially with regard to giving us a satisfying resolution to the Chief and Cortana's relationship. If they can finally deliver that well-rounded classic Halo experience, then they'll have successfully and definitively made Halo their own. For more on Halo Infinite, check out our exclusive reveal of the new Streets multiplayer map, and stay tuned all November long for more IGN first coverage on Master Chief's latest adventure. Oh my god, bro! Just, just don't. That's that's it. That's everything. But oh, I'm so excited for this, bro. I'm so excited for Halo. Oh, you, just, you can't even like. I can't even explain how excited I am for this campaign. Just for like the the lore around it. When I've I've done, I've done my research on the lore, I know exactly what needs to. I know exactly where we are currently, and where we are going potentially in Infinite. And it just makes me so so excited for it. But guys. If you are excited for it, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this gameplay. I'd be really, really interested to know. And of course, if you are new around here, do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And make sure you drop a like on today's video as well, because it would be much appreciated. But yeah, let me know anything down below. We'll see you all in the next one.